Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again today. Today we are going to be learning how to do paper marbling with shaving cream. So here are a few of my examples that we did this morning. As you can see, some really cool things you could do with paper marbling and shaving cream. This is a good one. And um, I'm also going to show you how to take your paper marbled paper and turn it into a book. So it's going to be a, a nice sewn book in the middle there. As you can see, it's sewn on the edges, so it's not going to fall apart. And you can use this for a journal, a, a notepad, a sketchbook. You could make draw a little story in there, write a story. It could be used for whatever you want. So for materials for this project, we will be using, of course, um, shaving cream. So it could be any shaving cream that you have around or that, you know, you wanna, wanna go buy. So any kind of shaving cream will be fine. You're going to need acrylic paint. So any kind of acrylic paint you have, this is like just some craft paint I like to have around the house. Um, so that would work. And you will need, I have, I use this baking sheet to kind of, this is where I will spray my shaving cream and put my paint. So I ha, I like to use one of those. If you don't have one of those, that's fine. You could just use a, a tabletop. You could even put some foil down to have a kind of protective layer in between um, the paint and your table. You will also need some kind of a squeegee device. And if you don't have a window squeegee around, um, I'm actually today going to use a ruler. So it's just anything that has a, a, sh a nice, flat, hard edge, because we'll, we're going to use it to squeeze our shaving cream off of our paper. And of course you will need paper. So here I have some thicker paper. It's really not like computer paper. It's a little bit thicker, more like a cardstock. Um, I, I also have a little bit bigger paper. This is more of like a yellowy manila, manila color. Um, and then I also have, this is computer paper. And so this will be the inside of my book. So I just put computer paper on the inside of my book. And you can use any kind of paper for the inside of your book. This project is very messy, super messy. So you want to wear not your best clothes. You can wear an art smock or an apron. Um, it, you'll definitely get paint on your hands and you might get paint on your clothes. I know I do all the time. So you can have some paper towels around. I also have this pack of wet wipes that gets things clean pretty well. Um, any kind of scrap rags you have around to help clean up because it will get messy. All right, so I have a stick here. This is what I'm going to use to stir my um, paint into my shaving cream. I just chose a stick because it's just something I have laying around and it's easy to find and it's free. You can use a knife, like a butter knife. You can use a, a fork or a spoon. You could use anything that's kind of long and pointy like this. This is gonna help you stir your paint. At the end of this, I'm going to show you how to make a simple stitched book. So if you wanna do this book project, then you're going to need to um, have, your cover will, I just chose this like an eight and a half by 11. So this will be folded for our cover once it's done being marbled. And then you'll want paper to go inside which you also fold up and you'll put right inside there. So any kind of paper that will fit, and if it's a smaller piece, you can just fold that and just have a little mini book. That's fine too. So you'll need your paper for that. And then you will also need, um, I just, I have some embroidery floss around my house and that's what I used to stitch my book up with. So as you can see, on the edge there, on the spine, that's the embroidery floss, and it's sewn right in the middle. Um, so you can use embroidery floss, you can use like a yarn, a thin yarn, or a thick string, anything that's just a little bit durable to help hold your book together. You're also going to need a needle to sew your book. And this is a tapestry needle, but you could use any kind of needle that you have. 
You're going to need, I have an awl, this is called an awl, um, but you can use anything that's kind of, it's got a nice pointy end here, because we're going to be poking the inside of our book, we're going to be poking holes right through to the outside. So you can use even a sh really sharp pencil or some kind of a tool. So you're going to need something like that to poke holes and some scissors around that will be helpful to cut loose strings and things like that. Okay, so let's get started. So I have my baking sheet here and I have my paint ready. I have my shaving cream ready. I've got my mixing stick. And then I also have handy my, my ruler or my squeegee that I'll be using here. And I also have my paper. So you're going to start by taking your shaving cream. And you're going to want to put a nice layer of shaving cream all on the bottom of your pan here, whatever surface you have. Okay, so it's okay if some of the pan still shows through. It's just like a nice kind of even thick layer here. All right, so once you have your shaving cream down in a nice layer, you'll want to pick some paint. I usually like to pick two to four colors. So I'm gonna take a little bit of paint and you're going to squeeze kind of lightly and go like this as you squeeze. You don't want a big glob here and a big glob here. You kind of want it nice and even all across. So it's kind of something like that. Do some purple here. Same thing. Something like that. That one is a little bit more globby, but you know what? That's okay. So I'll kind of glob that one on a little bit all over. Okay, and then I'm going to take my stick and this is where I'm going to mix the paint together. Now you don't want to over mix because it'll just become a muddy mess. So you're going to want to kind of swirl and drag the colors all together. So as you can see, I'm making some cool designs and I want to be careful not to over mix. So I think I'm going to leave it just like that. There's still some color here and there and it's not all muddled together. And then you're going to take your paper and you're just going to set it down where you want it, right on top, and then very kind of gently you're gonna push it down into the shaving cream and kind of give it a rub. And you want all of the paper to come in contact with the shaving cream. So you don't wanna push it way down to the bottom. You kind of want it to set on top you want to make sure all of the areas of the paper have touched the shaving cream. That's why I like to rub it all around. Okay, so now you're going to want your squeegee handy and you're going to peel it up. And I'm going to put it right here. And you want a nice clear space to do your squeegee in here. So I'm going to take my squeegee and actually flip it this way. And I'm gonna start right at the top, and I'm gonna hold it with the tip of my finger. Start right at the top, push down really, really hard, and pull toward me. Just like that. So that is a really nice one. As you can see, all of the shaving cream is gone, except the little bit here at the top. And as you can see on my squeegee, I have a bunch of the used, um, shaving cream here. So here you could just wipe it off. If there's any leftover shaving cream, you can just kind of, you can wipe it off. Um, you could always go back again with the squeegee if any big chunks got left on there, but that's pretty much it. And then you can le let this dry and it really doesn't take long to dry at all. Just want to make sure that there's not a big clump of paint on the back because sometimes that happens. So you can, you can set it somewhere to dry. Let's do another one. You want to make sure that you keep your area clean. So you, every time you pull um, a paper, you want to wipe it when you're done. Wipe your spot. So I'm actually going to use the same um, shaving cream that I just used. And I'm going to add maybe some different colors on top. Because some of these old colors will actually show through. And then the new colors will be on top. So for my new colors, I think I'll choose something way different than what I just used. I think I'll do some blue on top and then like a darker blue. Okay, so now that I have a few more colors on there, I'm going to once again use my stick to kind of stir. Not much stirring, just a little bit. 
You could even do lines. Let's try that. I think I'll try my big paper now. So this will this is the paper I'll use to make my book cover. All right, so it covers pretty much the whole thing. I'm gonna, again, wanna set it on there and just kinda gently push it down, squeeze it down, and rub all of the sides. Rub the middle. Make sure all of the sides get out. All right, thank you, I've got my helpers here. All right, so now I'm going to pull it up. I'm gonna take my squeegee, set it at the top, and pull. That came out really nice. So this white area here would have been the edges where there really wasn't much color, but you know what, that's okay. It still looks really cool. So after you've done a couple of pulls here, you can always add some more shaving cream on top to kind of freshen it up. And then you can add some more colors on top. Light yellow, and I've got some orange here. Okay, give that a try. So we'll stir that up. I'm gonna make a spiral. Okay, not much, not a lot of stirring, just a little bit. And I'm gonna set my paper on. And rub it down. Okay, thank you helpers. Going to pull it up, set it down, and then I'm going to take my squeegee again and pull it. Nice. That's a nice one. Okay, so once you've had your fun with your paper marbling, uh, make sure that all of your your pieces are dry before you do anything with them. So just um, touch them on the top and if they're still wet, give them a few more minutes or you could always take a blow dryer and blow dry them. So this next step, I'm going to show you how to make a book. So if you remember, this is the book I made before. So it's a nice, it's called a, uh, this stitch I'm going to show you is called a pamphlet stitch. And it's just a really easy stitch. Um, there's definitely other ways to stitch up a book. So feel free to do any kind of way that you want. You could even look up some different stitches. If you don't have a needle or don't feel like dealing with a needle, you could always just staple your things together. So these are just some ideas. So you're going to take your finished marbled paper and you're going to fold it in half. Like that. And if it curls up, you could always, once it's done, you can put it under a book and it'll kind of help flatten it out. So as you can see, this paper is folded in half. And then I'm going to take my filling paper and I'm going to fold that in half as well. So this is just about, you know, four or five sheets of computer paper just folded in half. And that fits really nicely right inside there. And then you're going to need your, if you have an awl or if you have any kind of sharp tool, you probably could even, if you have a thick needle, you can use a needle to poke the holes. Um, you'll need your needle and then you'll need your thread or your yarn or string and then some scissors. So you wanna start with, you wanna make sure that your papers and your cover are all lined up really nicely. And then you're gonna wanna open it up to the middle and kind of flatten it out a little bit. And this stitch I'm showing you will have five holes. If you want to at this point, you can take a ruler and measure out five dots where you're going to want to poke the holes. And if, they, if you want them to all be equidistant, then you could use your ruler at this point. I'm just going to kind of eyeball mine. So I'm gonna start with the middle dot and I'm gonna put it right in the middle and I'm gonna go right through that crease and it's gonna go right through to the back. And as you can see, it's come out the spine, right on the fold of my other, my back here. So there's one, and then I will do two and three. And as you can see, I kind of eyeballed them pretty, pretty good there. And then I'll do, I'm gonna flip it around here. I'll do four 
and five. So as you can see, I've got five holes and they all go through right through the crease in the back. Okay, so once I have my holes, I'm going to take my string here and I'm going to give myself, you know, this is probably about two feet or so of string. Cut it. I'm going to put it on my needle. I'm going to leave a little tail here. Okay, once you have your needle threaded, you're going to want to go up through the first hole right in the middle here. And you're going to want to pull it about so it has about a two inch tail and make sure that you went through to the hole on the outside. Sometimes they like the needle gets lost in the pages, but as you can see mine went through. And then you're going to want to go to the next hole and go down. Pull it. So it's kind of tight down here, but it also has the tail here. And then you're going to want to go up the next one. Like that. And then you're going to want to go down to this one because this one doesn't have, as you can see, this one doesn't have any string. So you're going to want to go down to this next one. And then you're going to skip right over this hole, the middle hole here, and you're going to go up to this one over here. And then you'll go down the next hole. Make sure it's tight. Turn it around. Go down the next hole. And then you're going to go flip it over. Go back into the middle hole where you started. And here you're going to meet up with this original tail. And then you have a, a string right here that's kind of in the middle. And I like to have one piece of my string on the one side and one on the other. And at this point you could also go and kind of tighten it up if it needs to be tightened anywhere. There we go. So now it's nice and tight and I'm going to actually just tie a little knot right here. A double knot. All right, and I'm going to trim it short. Okay, so as you can see, that's what it looks like in the inside and on the outside. That's what it looks like. And this is, again, just one example of a stitch, and you're more than welcome to experiment. So you can close it, and it'll be a nice bound book. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed our um, paper marbling lesson today. And again, here are, here's the book that I made today. And then this is the other book example. So these are these are really nice. Again, they don't have to be this size. They could be any size. They could be smaller. They could be bigger. Um, and then these are just the paper marbled sheets that we did today. That one came out really cool. This one. So this is just a really fun and messy project, and the possibilities are endless with this. Um, if you if you pull one off and you don't like it, just just do another one. There's so many different surprises that will come from pulling this off. So another thing you could do with a piece of marbled paper is you could always cut it up and use it as a collage. Um, you could draw right on it. You could use it as a background for something. There's lots of possibilities here. Um, this book is kind of just one example. So if you could, these even would make really good gifts if you wanted to send somebody a little gift quick and easy kind of a thing. So thank you for joining me again. And if you do any of these projects, please feel free to post them in our comments or email us pictures. We'd love to see what you're doing and we hope you have fun. Thanks a lot.